Hello students, welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Dr. Mini Singh from the Department of Biotechnology of Punjabi University, Patiala. In this module, we will understand the nanobiosensors for food safety part 2, in particular the optical nanobiosensors. We have understood in the previous modules the role of food safety biosensors in food analytics. The importance wherein we talk about food pathogens, we talk about contaminants and so forth. The two most important kinds of uh, uh, biosensors which have been used are the electrochemical biosensors and the optical biosensors. In the previous module, we understood how electrochemical biosensor principles work. In this module, we will understand how optical biosensing techniques are applied to the analysis of, of certain food contaminants or, or pathogens. The reason why optical biosensors are gaining impetus in the arena of food bioanalytics is because of their sensitivities of detection and also the specificities of detection. These two uh, are concerns which are to be overcome by of conventional techniques. These two concerns are not met efficiently by the conventional techniques. And when we talk about optical techniques, we will also understand in this module the various optical sensing phenomena, whether it is Raman light or whether it is optical light or whether it is reflected light, how the angles of reflection change and how these are used as anal in the analysis of food analytes. Therefore, this module has been designed with the following objectives. In initially, we will understand about the biorecognition elements for optical sensing. We have learned before that a biosensor essentially comprises of a biological recognition element with a transducer. In this module, we'll particularly talk about transducers, but we will also introduce ourselves with two specific biological recognition elements, which is the antibodies and the aptamers. Thereafter, this will be followed by understanding the principles of optical biosensing. These principles will range from simple spectroscopic naked eye detection to fluorescence and quenching responses to SERS responses and SPR responses. SERS responses are surface enhanced Raman spectra techniques and SPR responses are surface plasmonic resonance techniques. Thereafter, we will also understand how these techniques enhance the sensitivity of optical biosensors and why we will understand this by taking certain specific examples. Towards the end of the module, we will be showing you three videos. These videos will encompass certain principles of optical sensing and will also tell us how the biorecognition elements are when it combines with, with the analyte, how the change, how there is a change in the reflection and how optical sensing techniques become so, so sensitive. Till now, we have seen certain specific examples of food analyte detection. The first was a naked eye detection. And we've also seen, we've understood, and we've taken specific examples of analytes which are fraudulent. The first example was that of milk urea detection followed by melamine detection. Urea, urea is added to synthetic milk and synthetic milk it becomes a marker for detection of either adulterated or synthetic milk. Similarly, melamine is added into the milk to give a false protein concentration. Melamine is a very highly nitrogenous compound, a small molecule, but very highly nitrogenous. So when we add that into the milk, it will give us a false protein concentration. So these fraudulent chemicals are added merely for certain small economic gains, which is very unfortunate. However, we have to overcome these. We should develop techniques. And this module has particularly understood, in this module, we have particularly spoken about optical techniques. The Naked eye detection is, a, is the simplest form of detection wherein there is a color change, whether there's color change because of a reaction or simple aggregation, physical change of nanoparticles. Either, in either of the cases, there is shift in the absorption maxima, which can be either seen, noticed directly by a naked eye detection, but the naked eye detection cannot quantify the, the concentration of the analyte. Therefore, we use spectroscopic techniques. A little advanced were the fluorescence techniques and we also understood that fluorescence techniques need a presence of a fluorophore. There are certain fluorophores which are specifically present in nature. Let's say if I wanted to detect the presence of curcumin, a curcumin is a natural fluorescing molecule. If I pass UV light through this, through this uh, sample, it will begin to fluoresce. 
Therefore, if I wanted to know the concentration of curcumin in this sample, I could uh, put an array of incident light, UV light, it will fluoresce. The degree of fluorescence or the intensity of fluorescence will give me in turn the concentration of this analyte present in the sample. Uh, one addition to this same concept is the fluorescence quenching concept where we are told we have spoken about FRET. In that case, let's say I have a fluorescing molecule on one side. On the, in its close vicinity, I will put in a quencher molecule. So when this is fluorescing, its fluorescing energy will get transferred into the quencher molecule and there will be a dip in the fluorescence. This is called FRET concept. The third concept that we understood was the SERS, surface enhanced Raman scattering. When a photoprobe, a Raman probe is placed in, in contact with the, food, the analyte, certain, we are able to, sometimes we are able to tag the analyte with the Raman probes. So when a laser beam falls on it, the, there is also emission of light. When that emission happens at the same wavelength, that kind of scattering is called Rayleigh scattering. But when there are certain analytes attached to it, let's say there is an antigen-antibody complexation, the, emission, the emitted light will not be at the same wavelength as that of the incident laser beam. It will reflect at a different wavelength. That kind of scattering is called Raman scattering. And it is this Raman scattering, therefore, which gains importance in the analysis of analytes, particularly because of complexation of the antibodies and antigens. The last kind of analysis is a surface plasmon, and, uh, plasmon resonance. Gaining importance recently, we were in these videos that you will see, the, which, which we'll, see we'll show you, uh, the first will be based on the principles of SPR biosensing. In this video, we will see very clearly how an antigen and antibody complexation happens and how that changes the angle of deflection of light. That change in angle of deflection is merely because of the change in the refractive index in the vicinity of that complex. This will be followed by another video in which we will talk about the importance of analysis of bisphenol A. Bisphenol A is one of the chemical contaminants which has been recently recognized by WHO as a health concern factor. Finally, we will look at small one video in which we'll talk about fiber optic biosensors for pathogen detection. In the previous module and the one before that, we have now established the role of biosensors in food safety. And we've also understood that the two most commonly used electrochemical, uh, um, the most commonly used transducers are the electrochemical and the optical transducers. We have understood the concepts of the electrochemical biosensing in this module let us see how optical biosensors have been developed for detection of food toxic elements by far the most specific interactions are the antigen and the antibody interactions i say specific because an antigen is generated only against a specific antibody so therefore, when we're looking at uh, limitations which are offered by conventional techniques of crosstalk, and if we want to enhance the sensitivity of detection, an antigen-antibody binding is the best sort of interaction to develop uh, specific biosensors. Therefore, antibodies as working elements form the most highly specific biological recognition elements. However, since antibodies suffer from one major disadvantage or i would say two the first being their stability because they're biomolecules and two their costs therefore it was important for scientists to look at alternatives which offer the same kind of specificity at a lower cost and which are also highly stable therefore the one kind of molecules which are now emerging in the field of sensing are the use of aptamers. Aptamers are small nucleic acids or peptidic elements which behave much like an antibody and they are highly specific like antibodies but they are also very very stable. Shown in the figure is an example of an antibody versus an ant aptamer. On the left is a primary antibody, the Y-shaped gray colored primary antibody with the target and with a secondary antibody over on an aptamer. On the right are two aptamers, the primary and the secondary antibody both 
are aptamers. Just like the electrochemical transduction outputs were either in the form of electrical conductivity or impedance or resistance, there are various optical transduction principles too, which are broadly classified into four. Naked eye detection, fluorescent sensing, SERS sensing, which is surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy sensing, and SPR, which is surface plasmonic resonance sensing. These form of outputs are all related with optical outputs. They are, it, they are incident or emitted lights of various wavelengths, except in naked eye detection, where you can detect a change in color. We've also studied this slide before. Once again, in the realm of colorimetric naked eye detection, let's once again understand how this biosensor was developed for mercury detection. The biological recognition element in this biosensor is a uvase enzyme reason being we are trying to detect urea so what happens in the presence of ureas the urea gets hydrolyzed into carbonate ions and ammonium ions the ph of the system shifts towards alkaline and the ph indicator indicates the presence the shift in the ph more the urea present faster the reaction more quickly there will be the change in color the change in color from yellow to violet is very significant in this biosensor. Therefore, it is a naked eye detection. The visual detection of melamine in milk by labeled free silver nanoparticles. In this case, the silver nanoparticles, when come in contact with ammonium, with melamine, they agglomerate, they conglomerate, and when they come together, their absorption maxima shifts and they turn color from yellow to pink. This is also depicted in absorption spectrum in which clear, there's a clear shift seen in the absorption maxima. The TEM image of the nanoparticles before and after incubation with melamine clearly shows that before, before incubation, the silver nanoparticles are lying scattered, whereas after incubation with melamine, they come together and form conglomerates. It is this change in physical structure that causes a change in the absorption maxima and hence a visual spectroscopic detection of melamine. Fluorescence and fret based sensing is a very common kind of sensing mechanism which is used in sensors. When we are talking about fluorescence, we are essentially talking about light which is emitted when the molecule comes down to the ground state. The molecules which emit light of a different wavelength when they come down come back to the ground state this process is called fluorescence and the molecules which depict fluorescence or offer fluorescence are called fluorophores shown in this image are fluorophores of different kinds and they are fluorescing different kinds of light so there is an excitation light or any fluorophore needs an excitation light if we provide it with an excitation light, it will the molecules will excite and when they fall back to the ground state, they will emit fluorescence. Another phenomena which is in con congruation with fluorescence is the FRET-based phenomena, which is fluorescence resonance energy transfer. As opposed to a fluorophore, a quencher will quench the fluorescence and would, will stop the fluorescence of a fluorophore. So if a fluorescence happens and a quencher molecule is present in, the, present in the vicinity of a fluorophore, there will be quenching of that fluorescence. This is a very interesting phenomena when we have to develop biosensors. The quenching can be either direct contact quenching or collision quenching, but the one phenomena which is, which is exploited much in the development of biosensors is the resonance energy transfer phenomena because in the in the resonance energy transfer there is not very close proximity of the fluoros of the fluorophore and the quencher but enough for resonance energy to get transferred this is an example of a simple optical biosensor based on air stable lipid films with incorporated ureas for the rapid detection of urea in milk in this there a fluorophore comes in contact with a biological reactive element and it begins to fluoresce in high concentrations of urea present. 
surface enhanced resonance spectra based based sensing when laser light is felled on a photopro it sometimes emits light of the same wavelength that kind of scattering is called rayleigh scattering but in raman based sensing we are looking at light which is emitted at a different wavelength so also the figure on the top left depicts a raman technique vis a vis the figure on the right which is depicting an ercs technique in which a laser light is felled on for on a on a raman probe and it leads to the the emittance of a light at a different wavelength also seen in this picture are metallic nanostructures on top of which the analyte is present the figure below gives a more clear indication of the sensing phenomena which is developed around the ser based sensing the figure below the left part shows sensing element which is on the base a raman label the blue dot when the laser light falls on the raman label there is sers scattering however when a complementary sequence attaches to the label the raman probe the uh, moves away from the vicinity of the laser light and there is quenching of sers this is one of the techniques which is indirectly used for sensing in optical biosensors this is an example of a novel biosensor based on competitive sers immunoassay magnetic separation for accurate and sensitive detection of an antibiotic chloramphenicol in this case we have a magnetic bead which is functionalized by a chloramphenicol antibody there are gold nanoparticles which are functionalized by a raman probe and then the two are incubated together and this complex makes a magnetic structure when this is separated using a using a magnet and the laser is shown on the on the light it gives us an output signal in the form of an air sers spectra so with the increase in concentrations of chloramphenicol there is increase in the light in the intensity of light scattered which can be seen very clearly in the intensity of in the intensity graph of sers this is a, another work reported by the same group of scientists in the development of an aptama modified sers nanosensor an oligonucleotide chip to quantitatively detect melamine in milk with high sensitivity by now we would have established we have established that urea and melamine are key contaminants which are present in milk and are the source of favorite analytes for the, for developing biosensors in this work the working electrode is based on a glass slide is is a glass slide and we also have gold nanoparticles with the raman photoprobe on it where well, the melamine detect the melamine attaches itself on the thial modified uh, gold nanoparticles and this when when incubated with the glass slide the thiol uh, functionalized glass slide makes a complex in because and makes a complex by which the laser deflects the light from the photoprobe and this again can be depicted by the sers outputs what you're seeing on the left is an sers scattering by gold nanoparticles alone which is very negligible and when the probe comes in contact with it there is enhancement in sers signal and when we get the working electrode in order there is further enhancement in the sers signal surface plasmon resonance based sensing this is yet another optical kind of sensing technique wherein there is a change in the reflective angle because of that change in the reflective angle there is change in the refractive index of the medium what is shown on top left is uh, is an electrode with antibodies immobilized on it and when you if you invert it you will see the antibody antigen complex uh, happening on the base of the slide and when there is a there is there is a reflected laser beam there is also when the laser beam is incidentally for felled on the surface of the of the working electrode there is also a reflected laser beam but when there is complexation of the antibodies with the antigens there is a deflection in the reflected beam which is detected by a detector and this 
uh, deflection in the angle of reflected light happens only because of the change in the refractive index of the material and this change in refractive index is merely because of the complexation of the antigen and the antibodies. This concept will become clear when we watch certain videos which are depicting the development or the principles of uh, optical sensing techniques. Surface plasmon resonance, or SPR, is used to monitor binding events between molecules ranging from ions to viruses. This technique allows you to observe binding and measure kinetics, affinity, specificity, and concentration without any need for labels. Biacore T200 is designed for ease of use and exceptional sensitivity. In Biacore systems, molecular interactions are monitored on a removable sensor chip by the surface plasmon resonance detector. Samples and reagents are held in removable racks and are delivered to the chip by a microfluidic system that uses very low volumes of sample, down to a few microliters. In addition, the microfluidic system supplies the sensor chip with buffer from the buffer bottles and delivers waste liquid to the waste bottle. The operation of the instrument and the data collection and evaluation is handled by intuitive software. Let us show you how it works. A glass slide coated with a thin gold film creates the sensor surface. For most applications, a dextran matrix covering the gold film acts as a substrate to which molecules can be attached and provides a hydrophilic environment for the interaction. Other matrices can be used to attach specific types of molecules. The specificity of the surface is determined by the nature of the molecule attached to it. So one binding partner is attached to the surface of a sensor chip and the other is injected in a continuous flow of solution. Whatever the nature of the molecules involved, we call the attached interacting partner the ligand and the partner in solution the analyte. Biacore uses the phenomenon of surface plasmon resonance to detect biomolecular interactions as they happen. SPR causes a reduction in the intensity of light reflected at a specific angle from the glass side of the sensor surface. As molecules bind to the sensor surface, the refractive index close to the surface changes, altering the angle of minimum reflected intensity. The change in SPR angle is proportional to the mass of material bound. The sensor surface, the microfluidic system, and the SPR detection unit work together to measure biomolecular interactions. The result from the detection of change in refractive index is displayed as a sensorgram, where the binding response on the y-axis is plotted against time in the x-axis. Since light does not penetrate the sample, analyses can be performed on colored, turbid, or opaque samples. From studying the shape of the sensorgram produced, binding yes or no, specificity, affinity, kinetics, and active binding concentration can be determined. The sensorgram provides real-time information about the entire interaction. This means that in a single SPR experiment, you have now obtained a wealth of information about your binding, which helps you understand the dynamics of the interaction or to quantify your analyte. And all of this without using labels. In addition to the many common types of pollutants which are well known, the next generation faces another health risk coming from the hormonal pollutant bisphenol A. Bisphenol A may be released from many kinds of plastic container products. It causes detrimental effects on brain and hormone development in complex ways, and it interferes with metabolism, even at low concentrations. Therefore, an advanced technology which can quickly and accurately monitor this and other such compounds is in high demand. ETRI developed an inverse opal photonic crystal, which is prepared using a periodical assembly of microspheres in 3D as the template. 
The template is dipped or filled with an imprinted solution containing BPA, crosslinkers, and functional monomers. After gelation of this solution, the microspheres and BPA are removed by solvent washing to generate the photonic crystal structure with BPA imprinted material in the skeleton. The molecular imprinted material offers highly accurate identification and is not easily interfered with by other matrices. It can be applied in detecting BPA. The detection of BPA is conducted simply by putting the photonic crystal detector in a solution sample. Any BPA in the sample is absorbed by BPA molecular imprinted nanocavities on the photonic crystal sensor, causing changes in the sensor's reflective index, which can be observed as a shift. The BPA concentrations can be determined by the Bragg shifts of the photonic crystal detector. It has the following advantages. 1. Detects concentrations of bisphenol A as low as 10 micrograms per liter, with a standard deviation lower than 20%. 2. Bisphenol A in a solution sample can be detected in less than 10 minutes, and the photonic crystal detector can be reused up to 5 times. 3. The photonic crystal detector apparatus is small and portable. 4. Integrated chips can be developed to simultaneously detect a variety of environmental pollutants. Further development of molecularly imprinted photonic crystals will enable easy and inexpensive monitoring of a variety of environmental hormones. By adding different molecularly imprinted designs to the photonic crystal template, different target pollutants can be analyzed simultaneously. This technology greatly reduces analytic costs and improves efficiency as well. Fiber Optic Nanobiosensor Currently, many bioanalytical methods require labeling. Unfortunately, labeling procedures are tedious, making real-time monitoring impossible. Labeling may also alter the biochemical properties of the analyte and may be difficult for some molecules. Therefore, development of a label-free, real-time, and highly sensitive biosensing platform is highly desirable. A solution of gold nanoparticles has a wine red color because the particles have a plasma resonance band and absorb green light. Interestingly, light absorption by the particles is sensitive to the refraction index of their surrounding medium. In this fiber optic nanobiosensing platform, the absorbance change is enhanced by reflection along the fiber. This can be achieved by coating the unclad portion of the fiber by good nanoparticles and further functionalization of the particle surface with a biorecognition molecule. In order to reduce the consumption of samples and reagents and to shorten the response time of the sensor, a microfluid chip is integrated with the fiber optic sensor. When an analyte such as an antigen binds with a biorecognition molecule such as an antibody, on the gold nanoparticle surface, the refractive index of the medium surrounding the particles increases, and particles absorb more light. Because of the simple optical setup, the biosensor can be constructed within expensive parts and has the potential of being developed as a portable device. The biosensor is highly sensitive in detecting a cytokine IL-1-beta in synovial fluids, a detection limit of 1.2 picomolar concentration can be achieved. By monitoring the change in optical signal, this biosensor can directly interrogate the biomolecular interaction on the particle surface. As a result, the operation procedure is very simple, and the result of analysis can be obtained in a very short time. Being level-free and real-time, an analysis can be done in less than 15 minutes. This fiber optic nanobiosensor can be applied to chemical and biological research, such as bioanalysis, drug discovery, proteomics, and genomics. It can also be applied to biomedical diagnostics, for example, cancer diagnosis and clinical analysis. Food analysis, pathogen detection, 
food production monitoring. Agricultural analysis, for example, disease diagnostics for animals and plants, bioanalysis of soil and water quality, environmental monitoring, for example, bioanalysis of soil and water pollutants. We hope this biosensor can help you to do bioanalysis easier, faster, and more affordable. Let's begin to summarize this module. In this module, we learned about the biological recognition elements, particularly antibodies and aptamers, which are being used extensively for developing optical-based biosensors for specificity of responses. Optical transduction mechanisms, where we have spoken about naked eye detection, fluorescent sensing, SERS sensing, and the SPR techniques, and how these optical techniques, are, uh, techniques offer a high degree of sensitivity of detection. And these biosensors are being used successfully in food analytics, which we saw by certain specific examples and also through certain videos. Thank you.